S mod is one of the most ludicrous mods I think I've ever played for Half-Life 2. It's about as close to a brutal mod as we're ever gonna get, without it actually having brutal in the title. Developed originally way back in like 2006. I first tried this mod I think probably back in 2012 or so when I first started making stupid Left 4 Dead videos for YouTube. And it's a mod that I've always wanted to come back and do a video on. I think now given Half-Life's resurgence in popularity, it's probably a pretty good time for it. And I mean, sitting in self-isolation all the time, what the hell else am I gonna do? S mod is described as a single player modification that adds new weapons, effects, and NPCs. Initially on the surface, it's really just a bit of a weapons pack, but it also makes some really huge changes to the gameplay. It adds in new enemy types, there's a few different bullet time modes to choose from, including ones replicating both fear and max pain, which greatly affects how combat plays out. Gordon now has the ability to perform a kick and there's other gameplay tweaks modifying the way weapons handle. You can choose to play it in a traditional way, collecting med kits and batteries for your HEV suit energy. Or you can choose to play it S mods way, where enemies drop money when they're killed, which you can then use on HEV and first aid stations, along with actually eating their jibbed remains. Obviously this is not to be confused with S mod realism, which is about as far removed from this thing as I think possible. Setting this one up isn't too tricky. You first need to make sure you've got the SDK packs installed on Steam, and obviously you're gonna need to own Half-Life 2, but after that, it was as simple as downloading the mod online and unzipping it into the source mod folder. After that, prepare for unforeseen consequences. This is about as over the top as Half-Life 2 is ever gonna get outside of Gary's mod. For starters, the increased violence and weapon effects makes the shooting so much more satisfying. It's incredibly cathartic landing a headshot and just seeing this fountain of blood erupt from an NPC, like it's some kind of late 70s Tom Savini effect. What this does mean is that you can expect some pretty choppy performance. I've got a decent PC with 16 gigabyte of RAM, an i7 and an RTX 2070. But even still, my game stuttered along quite a bit at times. It's really to be expected though, considering the amount of crap that's going on here. There's a few cool things that S mod adds in too, like during water hazard, there's a point where the airboat goes missing and you have to drive the buggy around for a bit instead, which is pretty fun seeing this whole chapter through an entirely different vehicle. At the start of the game, when that dickhead Metro cop asked you to pick up the can and throw it in the trash, now the can is explosive and you can throw it back at the guy setting him on fire. during Raven Home, and when you return to City 17 for Anti-Citizen 1, there's also Friendly Combine with Black Mesa logos on their sleeves who fight alongside you. Even during Highway 17, old mate Adrian Shepard shows up at one point to lend a hand. It's in Nova Prospect, you'll see cloaked Combine soldiers. And they've also added back in the Combine Assassins during these chapters too, who are kind of like the Assassins from Half-Life 1. And these new enemies are really mobile and dummy thick. Then there's the weapons, my god, the weapons. It's almost too many to count. I think with the pistols alone, there's more here than the entirety of the original weapon lineup from Half-Life 2. This is what makes the mod so over the top and enjoyable, and you might just want to bind a give all weapons console command to something easy on your keyboard, so you can play around with all this stuff as quick as possible. You've got Gordon's returning pistol, which you can now dual weld, and combined with the bullet time mechanic, it's like you're in your very own John Woo film. There's a gold magnum as well, which kills everything in a single shot, and I think GoldenEye 64 fans are gonna have PTSD from this thing. You can use Alex's pistol, which fires in either burst mode or fully auto. There's the Checkmate CZ-52, which does really good damage, a Desert Eagle, which also does really good damage, and a flare gun, which sets enemies on fire with a direct hit, but takes literally five years to reload. And this is just the pistols alone. In the next category, you've got a whole bunch of new guns, mostly just variations on the MP7 and the pulse rifle, being automatic weapons like an AK-47, the M3 grease gun, MP5, MP40, P90, and an M4 carbine. The last two, I think, just being the same weapon models from Counter-Strike Source. They've also included the XM29, which was a gun that was originally in the old Half-Life 2 beta. That beta that we all downloaded from LimeWire, or whatever other virus-ridden file-sharing program we were using at the time. 
My only real issue is that some of these guns take really long to reload, which kind of takes a bit away from the whole carnage element when you're having to stop for three or four seconds waiting for Gordon to reload the damn thing. It almost seems like you pretty much have to aim down the sights with these guns too, because aiming down the sights makes it leaps and bounds more accurate than hip firing. The next category though is the real shit, and this is where it starts to get really fun. Obviously you've got the shotgun and the crossbow returning from vanilla Half-Life, but the other guns are just pure unrestrained absurdity. Again, another weapon taken from Sia Source is the M249 light machine gun, which is a gun that was also in Half-Life Opposing Force. Now this thing is just fucking awesome, and it can be fired for a dog's age before reloading. It's really accurate when aiming down the sights, and it does really high damage. You can just shred through combine with this thing. The best gun here though is the Jackhammer by far. This was a gun that's been in a few other games like Max Payne and Far Cry, and again, it just completely tears everything in your asshole. Combine it with a bullet time mode for some seriously satisfying kills, like it almost defies the laws of nature in how much fun it is. If that ain't enough, there's also a sawn off shotgun. You can either fire this bad boy one or two shells at a time. But even a single shell has the power to turn most enemies into a shower of pulverized body parts. You've got a few different rifles in this category too. You've got the M1 Garand, the Dragonov, and a Kar 98K. The M1 Garand is a bit underwhelming, and the Dragonov has some serious artificial weapon sway, which makes aiming down the sights about as useful as fart flavored breath mint. The Kar 98K though is pretty good. Now, this thing pretty much one shots every enemy type, just causing their body to vaporize. There's no scope though, so you're limited to basic iron sights, but overall it's pretty fun. Just go make a cup of tea or something while it reloads though, because it's slow as hell. Then there's stuff in here that just feels like it's been thrown in for shits and giggles, like how about your very own Strider Cannon? Or how about a flamethrower? There's a minigun in there too, because of course, why wouldn't there be? You can even carry around a little box of beans and go around throwing soy at people, kind of like a video game equivalent of what Kotaku has been doing for years now. You can throw out a bunch of bananas and then detonate them with the alternate fire, which I think might be a reference to the Worm series. You can use a PSP and launch out explosive UMDs, which alone is more fun than actually playing a real PSP. In a real Postal 2 move, there's even a spade and scissors. Throw out the scissors and watch them bounce all over the place, and the spade has that satisfying twang you'd expect too. Sending enemies ragdolling to the side like a bag of shit. I think my favorite weapon though, without a doubt, is the Stuff Launcher. With the alt fire, you can zap up an object and then it's stored in the weapon. And then with the primary fire, you can shoot out as many of that object as you want. Some useful and deadly, others not so much. With the Stuff Launcher, you could even spawn in enough Combine Assassins to repopulate all of Earth four times over. Yep, four times over. If we load this up with a cinematic mod, potentially I could kill people by shooting Alex's dildo at them. Imagine that, death by dildo. It's a good name for a band. For real though, this is the most fun I had in the entire mod. You can launch dumpsters at people, you can launch barrels, how about the buggy or even an airboat? Everything is a weapon. In Nova Prospect, I was even able to start shooting out toilets. This is the absolute peak of gaming right here folks, and one of the reasons I love PC gaming so much. I mean, look, if a grown man can't kill things in a video game by shooting toilets at them, then maybe life's just not worth living. And this all sounds like a lot, but I think I've probably only covered half of what the mod has on offer. And I mean, you can play through the campaign normally and come across all of these weapons as per usual, but I think most of the fun with these kind of mods just comes from getting them all through the console and buggering around with them for the hell of it. I mean, I'm not gonna play through the entire campaign just to get my hands on the Golden Magnum, let's put it that way. <laughs> Playing around with the bullet time mode, you can have some pretty cool effects too. Time stop's probably my favorite one. Now this stops time, obviously, but lets you move around pretty much at normal speed. You can fire off a bunch of shots at someone and then when time resumes, enemies take the full brunt of it at once, it's awesome. You can even do that shit they do in anime, where you hit a bunch of dudes with a sword, resume time, and then watch them all fall to the ground at once. <laughs> to let you really put all of these new toys to good use, S-Mod just packs the levels with way more enemies. You'll notice right off the bat in Root Canal that there's Combine on the rooftops, not to mention just more of them running around on the ground as well. Where it really gets over the top is during the Raven Home chapter, like the amount of zombies here just gets to the point that your frame rate often starts to take a permanent trip to single digits town. 
it is kind of overwhelming how many of these dead assholes start popping up. So you know what you do with them? Yeah, you fight fire with fire. Load up some head crabs into your stuff launcher and then start launching them right back. It's like death by irony. This does make the mod a lot harder, obviously, as the enemy count is way up there. So maybe just drop it down to easy or something so you can have more fun throwing scissors at people or crushing them with a dumpster. I mean, look, Sunny Jim, there's no bragging rights for finishing S mod on hard mode, so don't waste your time. You do get the sense of this mod being a bit of just throwing a bunch of shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. There are some weapons in here that either just don't really work within the game or actually don't work and are outright broken. But to be honest, I found the whole jank aspect to everything the most appealing factor. Like, it's so broken and over the top that I just can't help but enjoy myself when playing it. I've probably finished Half-Life 2 more times than I can count now, and I know the level design like I know the back of my ass. I don't even know what that means. So being able to play it and just see how much I can break the game with all these ridiculous gadgets is about as fun as it can possibly get. Unless I somehow find a way to wipe my memory and play through the whole thing again from scratch. Like a lot of mods, this thing is broken as shit too, and it crashes all the time. Not to mention map transitions often don't always work properly, so you've got to go into the console and load the next map manually, which is a bit of a nuisance. So yeah, get used to seeing this. A lot of the scripted events just don't work for me either, like when you first get to City 17 or loading up the Ravenholm chapter, Father Gregory doesn't even react to me at all. Now, I don't know if this is something I did personally or if the mod is just buggering up. Either way, it just reinforces what I said earlier. Look up those console commands for how to skip levels, get weapons, and all that kind of crap, because you're going to need them. Still, I do think S-Mod is a whole heap of fun, and if you're just absolutely sick of playing through this thing vanilla, and don't mind seeing Half-Life 2 having more shit thrown at it than a cheap stripper, well, it's definitely worth playing. There was a time when I'd end a Half-Life video like this by making some kind of snide remark about Half-Life 3 and how it'll never happen. But now that they've pretty much confirmed a proper sequel, well, what a better way to pass the time until its release. By shooting toilets at people or killing them with explosive bananas. 